Good Sunday morning, my divinely guided friends. Before we get going too far, music in the background. It's a little silent, I know, but Trevor McGrath, a young man who has a channel called Audible Alchemy. And he also writes some magnific magnificent Gnostic stuff. I'd call it the knowing <clears throat> on Facebook, Trevor McGrath or Audible Alchemy on YouTube. I'll put a link. So today is Sunday. So good Sunday morning to you. Oftentimes thought of as a spiritual day, although Sabbath is Saturday. We're in the middle of Passover right now. And believe it or not, there are a lot of Jewish bankers. <laughs> you know, it is what it is, eh? And uh, when we settle in to these times, when the few people, and there's not all Jewish, okay, because there's lots of other ones too, but there's quite a few Jewish ones, but when we settle into these times like Ramadan or Passover or the Christmas holiday season and stuff like that, those of us in the banking world who know that there's only a small number of people that actually move the funds, whether that be the credit system or the asset back system, there's really not that many people, you know. I won't say how many, I don't know, thousands, but still minor numbers compared to the population, whatever that population is. But, you know, the patience has to come once again and time for reflection. All of us that are working within the industry. How are we going to tackle it? Are we going to stay the typical course of I deserve because I have power. I deserve because I have the bloodlines. I deserve because of my religion. That's up to each, every, each and every individual, of course. And we are moving to a place where there is more abundance available. There's more choices for people, for humans on this heavenly mother earth plane, you have to admit. Or not. <laughs> it's up to you. I see it. I see the abundant technology, especially last few years, starting to explode as the great revealing happens and the suppression and the deception comes skidding to a halt. It's all there for us now. Thank God for the internet and the, our capability to avoid the distraction of, you know, the... Um, all of the things, okay. Bread and circus. Mainstream media and, and its manipulative manners. Alternative media and its manipulative manners. <laughs> it's just avoiding all of that, or as much of it as you possibly can, to get down to the truth, okay? So without further ado, what I'm going to do today is read a little bit, not a lot, from Letters on Yoga, with Sri Aurobindo, the teacher from India, who, with the mother, built an ashram and then built a city. A small city now to start with, but it's growing. Orville. I've talked about them before. Not a religion, but a teaching. A guidance of how to be in service to the divine. So that's what this is titled. It's just a few paragraphs that I'm going to read. Service of the Divine. From Letters on Yoga. Sri Aurobindo. You can Google it if you want. You'll find uh, lots of PDFs. The man was a prolific writer. There should be no straining after power. 
Okay, one or two more things before I go on. You know, my life was capitalist. I think kind of conscientious capitalist. The last couple of places I had were magnificent. I had a timber frame home on a shores of a lake, small lake that we built from a gravel pit that I was, you know, the owner of. <laughs> so, you know, there was money flowing and it was like, purebred cattle, beef industry, got into big business. And then everything went. And it was the best thing in my life because it introduced me to the idea of non-ownership. And, you know, not service to humanity. I won't say that, but service to the divine consciousness, the divine supra-consciousness that is this amazing thing that's happening whether we like it or not or whether we try to suppress it or de you know deceive or not exploit or not it's there it's a super consciousness that is just continuing to allow us to transcend or evolve some people like the word transcend transform whatever you want to call it move up a level, okay? Move up a level in your consciousness, in our consciousness, in humanity's consciousness. So, therefore, the work that I've chosen, and I chose it, to be involved in the banking industry, travel all over the world and discover the things that I've discovered about, you know, the credit system and the ease of, you know, how very few people in that system are allowed to just simply autograph agreements and poof, credit appears for global agenda, governments, whatever you want to call it. And I mean, they're all the same. Please, let's not get into the idea that there's a deep state bad guy side and a good guy side. I don't go for that. It's all one. <clears throat> Causing historic and economic demolition to try and keep secrets from the past and people away from their true power and what is their true power let's get into it okay service of the divine there should be no straining after power no ambition no egoism of power the power or powers that come should be considered not as one's own, but as gifts of the divine for the divine's purpose. Care should be taken that there should be no ambitious or selfish misuse, no pride or vanity, no sense of superiority, no claim or egoism of the instrument, only a simple and pure psychic instrumentation of the nature in any way in which it is fit for the service of the divine. To be free from all egoistic motive, well, that's going to take me some more work. I don't know about you. <laughs> to be free from all egoistic motive, careful of truth in speech and action, void of self-will and self-assertion, Watchful in all things is the condition of being a flawless servant. Think any politicians have read this? Might be a good thing. Yes, the use to which you have turned your vital capacities in Bengal and Bombay. He's speaking to some sadics, they call them, to turn them into instruments of service and the divine work is certainly the best possible. This chapter is about, this whole chapter that I'm reading from is about work and yoga, okay? So, or work in the yoga. Not in comparison to, but you know, most often we think in terms of spiritual work as meditative or very inner work, but you know, we can actually do work too. So that's, I love this chapter. Through such action and such use of the vital power, one can certainly progress in yoga. Remember, yoga is not 
that stretching exercise thing that the girls do in their you know, tight pants and stuff. It's like, it's a meditative practice to be in union with the divine. And exercise is part of that. Vital power is necessary for work. And you have an exceptional amount of it. Don't you? Of course, to make a full yogic use of it and of its force for actions. Sorry for the commercial in the background. I didn't plan that. And we'll just talk over it while it plays itself out. Okay, I think it's going to be fairly short. So we'll just... Isn't that ironic? They're talking about interest payments on vehicles. Okay, let's see if we can get rid of this. Sorry. Gone now. That was cute. I'm We're authentic here, okay? It just happens. Talking about interest payments on your new vehicle. <laughs> We're buying something from me. I don't have anything to sell. <laughs> of course, to make a full yogic use of it and of its force for action, the ego must gradually fade out and vital attachments and impulses be replaced by the spiritual motive. Bhakti, which means worship, devotion to the divine, and the spirit of service to the divine are among the most powerful means for this change. Reading and studying, like I'm doing here, Though they can be useful for preparing the mind, are not themselves the best means of entering the yoga. It is self-dedication from within that is the means. It is with the consciousness of the mother that you must unite. Mother being the matter, you know, the true logic, okay? Not the logic that we've been trained to think is logic, you know? Our minds have been trained to look out at stuff, okay? Buildings and infrastructure and say, this is logical. And it's logical that we built it because of this or that, or, you know, some logical monetary system. And those logical pe people called economists and lawyers and doctors and everything have led this and led us into this logical reality. Is it logical? True logic is that matter exists. Mother, M-A-T-E-R, matter, mother, exists. The work given by the mother is always meant as field for the self-consecration. It has to be done as an offering to her so that through the self-offering, one may come to feel her force acting and her presence. If one went to the Himalayas, okay, we're talking about meditation kind of practices here. Now, if one went to the Himalayas, the likelihood is that one would make oneself fit for inactive meditation and quite unfit for life and the mother's service. So in the next life, the character would be like that. This is simply the influence of old ideas that have no implication, no application in this yoga. It is here in the life near the mother, in the work itself, that one must become fit to be a perfect instrument of the mother. All acts are included in action. Work is action regulated towards a fixed end and methodically and constantly done. Service is work done for the mother's purpose and under her direction. All work equal in the eyes of the spirit. This is where you come in because it's all the same, whatever you're doing. Self-dedication does not depend on the particular work you do, but on the spirit in which all work of whatever kind it may be is done. Any work 
done well and carefully as a sacrifice to the divine without desire or egoism with equality of mind and calm tranquility in good and bad fortune for the sake of the divine and not for the sake of any personal gain reward or result with the consciousness that it is the divine power to which all work belongs it is a means of self-dedication through karma i think i'll stop there that's long enough hey maybe i can figure out how to put the link below to this too letters of yoga letters on yoga prolific writer as i said so much that you can find online from him it's all free Peace, harmony, love, abundance, and freedom for everyone and everything, every day on my mind, abundance, sorry, health, love, and union with the divine. I love you. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch up with you next week. Next few days. <laughs>